Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the evening session of the 90th public meeting of the Diego Cannon Independent Safety Committee. Uh, the next item on our agenda would be for public comments on items not on the committee's agenda. Okay. Yeah, my name is Ray Lutz. I'm with Citizens Oversight. And I'm here to talk today about this Helms proposal. Citizens Oversight has mainly been involved in the San Onofre nuclear plant and the shutdown there and the follow-on with in terms of the funds and the waste. And one of the things that came to light, we, we did get a, a settlement deal with um, Southern California Edison to work on moving the fuel to another place. Since we don't have another place identified, at least we have $4 million worth of funds that are being dedicated by SCE toward researching that with a team of six very um, uh, nice, I mean, they're, they're very good looking experts, I think, that should be able to do the, the job. Um, with that said, I was starting, since my background is in, as an engineer, I started looking forward to the next step. That is, we have a problem, as you know, with the, the canisters that, and a lot has been said about thin versus thick and how long they'll last and whether there's stress, corrosion, cracking, et cetera. And what we wanted to do was to not uh, give our same problem to the next place. We didn't want to have to say, OK, we're just giving you our same bad problem. We wanted to make the problem not so bad in the next place so that it wouldn't be just handing off the bad problem. And as a result, we came up with this acronym called HELMS. Um, easy to remember. Uh, a, and I'm, let me go through them, but let's start with the S, because the S stands for surface storage. And what we're acknowledging is that for the next near term, maybe, maybe 100 or 200 years, this stuff is so hot, it's going to have to remain on the surface. Some people say that, oh, we're going to do deep hole, bore holes, we're going to be able to revive Yucca, Yucca Mountain, et cetera. But even in the Yucca Mountain plan, they have in there 150 years of ventilation because it'd be too hot to close it. So instead of putting it underground, making it hard to manage, what we're saying is leave it on the surface for the 150, 200 years until it cools off. Oh, I'm open to other plans, but right now that's the only option that we really do have. And the H stands for in hardened facilities. Of course, we don't want to make them immune to terrorist attacks and so forth. Have passive um, boundaries, exclusion zones. San Onofre has an active exclusion zone with a 10-lane uh, freeway and, and uh, the number two railroad going through it, beach areas, which they would have to close off. We don't want that around one of these waste areas. We want it to be passive. Just put a fence around it, a good fence. Maybe Trump can help with how big that, how tall that is, you know. Um, so that's hardened. A e stands for extended life, meaning that the 40-year license term and the 40-year lifetime that they have. The design life and the license term is the same on the certificates of compliance that they're now issuing this to companies like Holtec. And so there is no concept at the NRC for anything more than 40-year horizon. 40-year, they don't require 80-year life, 100-year life, not required in the NRC code. Our proposal is to make it, the goal is a 1,000-year life with maintenance and 300 years passive life. Our proposal about how to do that is to enclose the existing canisters in, additional, in an additional outer shell. The outer shell, the canisters proposed for Yucca Mountain are a three inch thick alloy 22 container, which by the way, is, none of these current canisters are licensed for disposal. And Always in the mind of Yucca Mountain, they were going to open them up and put them into smaller canisters and put them underground. Well, we think that's a waste. We should use the canisters that we have, but put them in another outer shell, pressurize the gap with inert helium, and then you can detect any kind of leaks in that outer shell because you just detect the pressure change. 
and you can very easily maintain it by taking it out one, putting in another, and extending the life that way. So with maintenance, we put it in another shell and it's sacrificial. Local means, or L means local. Don't move them all across the country just to leave them on the surface anyway. There's got to be some place near where they start that would be acceptable. And a lot of these plants are probably okay right where they are, but most of them are near water. The only one is Palo Verde, which is not the only large plant that's not near a big body of water. But we don't want to see these moved all the way to, say, New Mexico from the East Coast just to leave them on the surface anyway. It's a lot easier to find a surface location. And M is for monitored. 724 monitoring. Not once in a blue moon with a robot searching for cracks, but monitoring them simply by watching that pressure change, which is going to indicate that that outer shell has a problem. Now, I'm for any solution that will meet our criteria. If they want to go with a single shell, like some people have proposed, the castor design, and they think that can last a 1,000 years, then that's fine. Uh, but we're suggesting uh, that maybe the, the du dual wall is more acceptable to the <coughs> industry because they'll be able to utilize the canisters they've already invested in. And when they get cool enough, which takes about 10, 20 years at any location, then put them in that outer shell to stop any other kind of cracking that would occur and make it easy to detect. OK, status of this. This was submitted to the NRC on January 2nd. Um, it was filed in the Federal Register on March 22nd. Public comment has expired. It expired on June, June, June 5th. And, um, and now uh, we're moving toward an administrative, or a administrative judicial process that they do at the NRC in order to process it. So they've accepted it. And we have proposed very specific changes into Part 72 to say, here's Part 72 now, and here's what we recommend that you change. So I think that it would be something that the, that the NRC basically has to rectify this main disconnect that they have. On the one hand, the waste confidence report says you can leave it at any plant indefinitely. That's what they say. It's fine. On the other hand, they only license them for 40 years. 40 years is not the same as indefinite. I hate to break it to everybody, but 40 years is not indefinite. We've got to come up with a better plan. My view is don't count on the future. I always say the favorite words of the nuclear industry, we'll figure it out later. I'm saying figure it out now with technology we have now and move toward this goal of having Helms compliant facilities. Is this compatible with Yucca Mountain? Not in the current design because the current design has single thickness canisters with a titanium drip shield, which is a ridiculous design in our view. It should encapsulate those canisters so that they can be monitored. Also, they're far too deep within the mountain to monitor. It might be easier to do a whole tech type design right down that, that main tunnel and put three up on each side, and you can contain the waste that we have with once it gets cool enough. Because the design they had in mind is, we're going to put it in when it's really hot and let the thing heat up, which really, if it gets over 100 degrees C or even over 120, you know, you're going to have a hard time working in there if there's any breakdowns. Now, I've sent to you the white paper on Helms and the petition that was submitted to the NRC. And we have that. OK. So you've got that stuff. And for any of the audience, we have handouts to summarize it. And if there's any questions, I can take that. Otherwise, I've, I've made my little speech. Yes. Uh, th th that was very, very thoughtful. Thank you. Um, okay. A question that would be obvious to ask, and I know the answer, is do you have any idea of roughly how much more this would cost and what that cost might be in the scheme of all the, of the whole nuclear industry and its cost structure? Well, uh, you know the answer already. Well, that's more than I have. No, I don't know the answer, oh. but I know a bound on it. You know you have a boundary on it? Yes. OK, well, I, I mean, think I was, that it's going to I know be, a number that it's lower than. I think that it's going to be less expensive than the current approach, what they have in mind. 
That is, if you can accept the current canisters and put a shell around them when they start to, to tend toward deterioration and extend their life significantly at the current location, while we think about what we're going to do, then you've extended what you can without spending all that money on Yucca Mountain, for example, and then maybe having a bad fit for what we need. So uh, uh, now I have talked to Holtec about this. All they have to do at the, say, the Consolidated Interim Storage Site in New Mexico, which has been recently at least partially approved by the Congress, is to ex make their vaults a little bit bigger, at least giving us the option of putting in a second shell. And that's really all it takes. If it's a site like Diablo Canyon, which has the uh, above ground structure with the concrete, all you got to do is put a little bit bigger concrete structure over it once you go to that second shell. So it's not astronomical to make this change. It's not like the idea of repackaging it in the thicker canisters, opening up those uh, sealed interior canisters and taking all the risk of hot cell and fuel pools, putting it into another thicker wall canister with unknown issues. Instead, sticking with what we have but going with a double wall approach. I have a little picture over here and on my flyers about the type uh, I get about the. Um, yeah, I just want to ask one more. Question. Okay, go ahead. Um, the reason I asked the question is that I don't know what the answer is to what it costs, but I know a bound on it. Um, and the way I like to think about it, and I'm looking at a reaction from you because we don't we, we haven't got all day to talk to you about this, but okay, you, uh, you know, but. Because we've got other I just things wanted on the to get agenda. it started in your mind. And this is a public comment period. It's supposed to be short, but I just want to want to make a point. If the Yucca Mountain scheme had gone forward, and as planned by the Department of Energy with its schedule, um, all the waste um, currently on uh, you know uh, on site in the United States was going to be disposed of over something like 50 years. From, from its opening, which would be like 70 years from now. That, I mean, I, I, I've seen that schedule. I mean, I'm not going to argue about the details. Okay. But the total cost of Yucca Mountain was going to cost a little more than 1% of the value of all the electricity generated to make that waste. In other words, the electricity to make that waste is worth this much, and the Yucca Mountain was this much, and it was about a little over a percent. That, that's the number. Your cost has got to be way less than that. So I'm not going to argue the case. Okay, but in like fact, that. to try to make this scheme um, realizable, it would be beneficial if you could get your arms around some approximate cost, even if it was only within a factor of two or so, because I suspect it'll not be so big as to scare anybody when you consider the cost that they're already incurring anyway, and and that would be helpful. It would be helpful for the world. But more to the point, we're a safety committee here, and we are concerned here for the safety and making sure that it isn't outrageously costly of the waste that's out there, right here, you know, eight miles from here. Mm -hmm. And a scheme like yours that could help to make it safer is something that is, that is of interest to our committee. Okay? I mean, just say that. That's okay. a fair... I well, mean, I, 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 I was speaking for myself. The others can say what they want. But it is of interest... I don't know what will happen. I mean, who can know? But being able to develop those would help to make or break your case in a way that would be uh, that could be very beneficial. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me. Even if it's really rough, because you don't have the I, detail. I agree. I, I I think you have a really good point there. Um, we didn't want to try to um, estimate it up front, but I think we could at least bound it, as you say. Yeah. I think that the incremental cost to make sure that it's an option at this consolidated interim storage site is absolutely minimal. All we're talking about is making the vaults a little bit bigger. That, that's, that's and that's helpful. not very much cost. Thank and you. And then we have the option of doing this, even if we decide later it isn't a good idea. But I would like to have the option and be able to tell that other site, look, we're moving our fuel there. We had a bad situation here, but yours is not going to be so bad because we've got it set up for this double layer. And you're going to be able to sell that, I think. And maybe make it more palatable for the residents around, around in that area that aren't looking too favorably on it, at least some of them. Thank you. That's helpful. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Les. Any more questions? No, that was helpful. No, thank Just, you. Yeah, thank you very one, much. One more.
quick note that, that this, this capability to overpack, to place into a, a, an additional canister, uh, is one of the things that we've identified as being very helpful uh, from the perspective of, of um, the, the, the safety case, particularly if, if you plan to decommission a spent fuel pool. Because at that point, you don't have a backup option of offloading the fuel. Yeah. So, so the, the idea of, of overpacks uh, to, to contain the original canisters uh, is actually one of the things that we're pointing at as a way to mitigate the risk uh, that if, you, if you're going to decommission a spent fuel pool, that, that you can handle things safely. Let me just, I know this is in the paper that we wrote, but uh, Humboldt, the Humboldt site does have the double layer design. In some sense, yes. Yeah, not in well, no, because the, it, it's housed in the. It's pressurized yeah, exactly. in yes. our helium, much like what we're proposing, although we're not saying you need the 15 and a quarter inch walls because it's under the ground. Uh, but still, if they want to do it that way, that would meet the criteria, probably except for monitoring, at which they can add in. So anyway, that's, that I think is something to make a note of uh, there. Actually, thank you for pointing also to, to, to that example, because that was, that was actually a very interesting approach that they took there, uh, since th they can actually transport those casts. Directly. Also, yeah, Without directly any. they're designed so that they're actually transportable. Um, so, okay, that's very helpful. I just have one more, you don't mind my giving advice, because no. I'm, I'm no, it's I attractive. It. Yeah. It would be really helpful if you stuck to what you are sticking to, which is trying to think through what the criteria need to be, but not being specific in the details. Because being specific in the details will stifle innovation, because there's a lot of, there's a lot of possibility for innovative approaches to meeting these criteria that could be um, unleashed without right. getting specific at this stage. Yeah, that's okay. agreed to, although we wanted to have at least one proposal that would that would say, okay, that's they're feasible. not just dreaming, that's they have feasible. an idea. Yeah. yeah, that's feasible. Thank you. And so we put that on the table. That's very helpful. Okay. Thank you for your ideas. Appreciate that. Right. Thank you for your remark, Mr. Lass. At